SEP Fanfic Readings Presents A Thousand Words by Olive Juice 28 Chapter 32 Brave at Heart At a quarter to eight, Hermione heard a knock on her door as she was putting the finishing touches on her makeup. The eighth years had agreed that the dress code for this party would be mildly fancy. No costumes like Halloween, no ball gowns or dress robes, but no jeans and trainers either. As a result, the girls had gathered in Daphne's room earlier in the week to finalize their wardrobe selections, and have the stylish witch help charm and alter their outfits accordingly. They had decided to wear shades of red and pink, to match the decorations, which was easily achieved by changing the color of dresses they brought from home. Padma had charmed a grey cashmere sweater dress into a deep fuchsia, and Daphne had added delicate ruffles around the cuffs, and hem in the same color. Luna wore a pale pink cap sleeve frock and slightly darker pink hearts dotting the full skirt, and a matching ribbon woven into her long, loose braid. Hannah chose a shade of dusty rose for her A-line, sleeveless, previously blue dress, and Daphne had transfigured the former Hufflepuff's yellow and black scarf into a champagne-colored wrap in a light sheer fabric. The designing witch herself had chosen a deep burgundy color for a form-fitting sequin dress with three-quarter sleeves that sparkled with every move. Hermione nervously took in her own appearance. She had allowed Daphne to talk her into going with the shade of scarlet red identical to that of her Gryffindor heritage. Not one to wear dresses typically, she had gratefully accepted and borrowed one from her fashion-forward housemate, but was now second-guessing her decision. The fitted velvet dress had long sleeves and a hem that stopped a few inches above her knee, and a wide, rounded neckline that almost reached the tip of her shoulders. While the front was very modest, a low-cut V that went almost all the way down to the small of her back showed off a bit more skin than she was used to. She had pulled her curls into a low side ponytail, with some wisp escaping around her face and neck, and while she had flat-out refused to wear the crimson-red lipstick Daphne had tried to convince her would look perfect, she did apply a shiny clear gloss, as well as some eyeliner and mascara. A second knock sounded on her door, and she took a deep breath blew it out in a jittery huff, and shook her arms and hands a little to get rid of some of her nerves. She cautiously made her way to the door, wondering why on earth she agreed to wear heels as she constantly felt that she was going to fall over, and shyly opened it to find Draco anxiously fiddling with his tie. His head immediately snapped up and he froze as he took her in, his pewter gaze roving from her somewhat tamed hair to the shiny black pump she was precariously balanced on, and back up again to meet her eyes. "'You look amazing!' His words came out barely above a whisper. She beamed at the compliment, all nerves forgotten, and took a moment to appreciate the impressive wizard before her. He'd chosen black trousers, a black vest, and a black tie, with his button-down shirt, was almost the exact same shade of red as her dress. He looked like he'd stepped out of the pages of a magazine, with his perfectly tailored clothes, his platinum blonde fringe falling artfully over one eye, and his teasing smirk gracing his ridiculously handsome face. For a split second, she marveled at the fact that someone as smooth and polished as he would be interested in someone as chaotic and frizzy as herself, but she refused to spiral into a self-degrading comparison. This night was meant to be fun and light-hearted, and she was actually their first real date, if one could call it that, and she planned to enjoy every second of it. "'You look pretty great yourself,' she replied cheekily. She opened the door a little wider. "'I have something for you.' She turned around to pick two wrapped items off her dresser, giving him a glimpse of the back of her dress, which caused his eyes to bug and his throat to make an odd gulping sound. Merlin, that dress! He had a fleeting thought of simply stepping all the way into her room, shutting the door, and completely abandoning the plans they had for that evening in favor of snogging her senseless. Before he could act on his impulse, however, she returned and held out two rectangles, each wrapped in cream-colored paper with a red ribbon tied on top, one slightly smaller than the other. "'It's just something little,' she began in a rush. "'Just something I wanted you to have. Open the bigger one first. He did as she requested, and unwrapped an eight-by-ten dark wood picture frame. The photograph it held was one of the ones Hannah had taken of the whole group of eighth years, the day she had shown them her all her new camera. The ten housemates were squished together on and around one of the couches in the common area. Hannah was perched on one arm, with Neville on the cushion closest to her. Next to him sat Daphne, Hermione, and Draco— on the other arm balanced Dean, and behind the couch were Padma, Theo, Luna, and Anthony. The magical image displayed a continuous loop of laughter and fidgeting. Daphne flipped her hair over her shoulder, catching Hermione in the face, causing her to lean away and into Draco, who turned to press a quick kiss on the top of her head. 
At the same time, Neville had reached up to intertwine his fingers with Hannah's, while both of their cheeks flushed slightly. Padma was fussing with her shirt, while Dean and Anthony were gesturing animatedly at each other, and Theo, after watching Draco, leaned down and kissed the top of his fellow Slytherin's head, causing those nearby to laugh hysterically. As the giggle subsided, Luna turned and placed a soft kiss on Theo's cheek, causing his eyes to goggle comically before the image reset itself. At the time the picture was taken, Hermione hadn't even registered Draco's kiss with all the insanity going on around her, but when she had asked Hannah for a copy of it, she was pleasantly surprised. They looked so comfortable together. Not just the two of them, either, but the whole group. The friendly interactions and the genuine hilarity of the moment, the physical closeness that hinted at the bonds that they had formed that year, all made her feel a rush of affection and pride for the housemates who had grown to feel more like family than she had realized. It meant a great deal to her that they had come so far since the previous year, and she knew it meant just as much, if not more, to Draco, whose acceptance into this eclectic group had played a huge part in the change she'd seen in him over the past five and a half months. She wanted him to see it for himself, which is why she chose the photo as part of his gift. If the intense way he was studying the image was anything to go by, she was pretty sure she'd hit the mark. Draco cleared his throat and looked up to meet the earnest brown eyes watching him carefully. "'This is fantastic, Hermione. Thank you.' He was slightly horrified to feel his eyes stinging and blinked rapidly to try to alleviate it, but was sidetracked by a pair of arms wrapping around his waist and a cheek being pressed to his shoulder. Still holding the frame in one hand, he returned her embrace, resting his own cheek on her head, careful not to mess up her hair. He knew she understood how much the friendships he'd forged in their new house meant to him, and the fact that she could acknowledge it in such a sweet and meaningful way overwhelmed him. What had he done to deserve her? He knew the blatantly truthful answer to that— nothing. But before he could dwell on how much he really didn't deserve this wonderful witch in his arms, she spoke, her words muffled by his shirt. "'Say that again?' he teased. "'You called me Hermione,' she looked up at him, her eyes glittering and her smile blinding. He froze for a second, realizing she was right. He often thought of her as Hermione in his head, but he really hadn't ever called her that before. Since returning to school, they spent so much time together that he rarely needed to address her by her name— and the few times he'd had to get her attention, he resorted to Granger out of habit. "'I guess I did,' he admitted with a smirk. "'I like it.' "'Oh, do you?' She nodded and stretched up the teeniest bit, seeing as her high heels helped bridge the gap more than usual, and placed a soft, lingering kiss on his lips. Before he could deepen it, however, she stepped back and held up the second, smaller package he still had yet to open. "'Better hurry. The first years will be here any minute.' Her voice declared no nonsense, but her eyes held a teasing glint that told him she knew what he'd rather be doing. Knowing he didn't really have a choice in the matter, he heaved a dramatic sigh, causing her to giggle, and opened his other gift. This, too, was a wooden picture frame, although smaller than the first. It contained a photograph of Hermione, standing outside somewhere on the castle grounds, bundled in her heavy cloak, wool and beanie and mittens, her Gryffindor scarf wrapped around her neck. Snow was falling gently, and the lighting made it seem as if the sun was just beginning to set. Her nose and cheeks were slightly pink from the cold, and her curls danced about in the wind. She was pointing her wand at the camera, and after uttering a spell, she moved it in the shape of a heart, while gold sparks flashed at its tip. The effect was similar to that of muggle sparklers, leaving a trail of light behind the movement that fades away after a moment. Because of the continuous replay, the shape of the heart was clearly visible." Draco grinned at the joy on his witch's face in the picture. She seemed so very pleased with herself, probably because she had come up with the idea on her own, and had possibly even created the spell herself, which really was something. "'Thank you again. I will treasure them both.' He swooped in and gave her a quick kiss. "'You really like them?' Hermione fiddled with the cuff of her sleeve, seemingly nervous. He placed his hand on top of hers, causing whiskey-brown eyes to meet slate gray. "'Yes, I really like them.' He kissed her again gently, but not as much as I like you. He kissed her a third time, pleased to notice she even leaned into him as he pulled away, as if not wanting it to end. I really, really like you. One final kiss, which he forced himself to stop or he'd never leave the room. He chuckled as he took in her mildly dazed expression. Don't we have a party to attend? That shook her out of her fog as she jolted slightly, blinked a few times, and grinned back at him. Yes, we most certainly do. With that, 
Draco turned to the door, offering his arm, which Hermione took, and the two of them headed out to the common area as the first years started to arrive. Malcolm was hovering at the end of the buffet table, trying very hard to look like he was enjoying himself, while simultaneously attempting to work up the nerve to do something he considered to be stupidly brave. Or was it bravely stupid? Either way, at that precise moment, all of his supposed Gryffindor courage seemed to have scuttled back to his dorm room up in the tower. "'Hey, Malcolm,' Hermione greeted her first-year friend, causing him to startle slightly. She noticed he looked like he was about to be sick and put a hand cautiously on his arm. "'Are you okay?' "'Yes,' the young boy croaked. His cheeks were pale and his eyes wide and almost fearful. She could tell he definitely was not all right, no matter what he said. "'Can I get you something? Is anything bothering you?' She gently probed, her voice clearly filled with mounting concern as he refused to meet her gaze and kept swallowing with what seemed to be extreme difficulty. "'No, thanks. I'm fine.' Malcolm now looked like he was turning slightly green as he stared at the group of friends and classmates on the dance floor before him. "'Are you having a good time?' Hermione felt like she knew the answer to this question, but his odd behavior was extremely puzzling, and she wanted to get to the bottom of it. Her young charge nodded his head in jerky affirmation, but remained fixated on the partiers. She turned her own attention to the small sea of people, trying to figure out what he was looking at with such intensity. At that moment, her favorite wizard came strolling towards her, drawing her focus away from Malcolm. "'What happened? I turned around and you had disappeared,' Draco teased good-naturedly. "'Have my dancing skills regressed since New Year's Eve?' Hermione laughed and shook her head. "'No, not at all. I was just checking on Malcolm here.' She gestured to the younger student who remained frozen and silent next to her. Draco observed the boy for a moment, noticing just as his girlfriend had that the poor kid looked absolutely miserable. "'All right there, mate?' Draco leaned down a little to get right in Malcolm's line of sight, causing those wide, hazel eyes to flash over in his own in panic. "'Sure, yeah, great.' The tall blonde shot the curly brunette a look that clearly indicated something was up, and then turned to look upon the enthusiastic group of party-goers. After several seconds, and multiple glances between Malcolm and the dance floor, a knowing smirk tugged at the corner of Draco's mouth. "'Let's get some punch, shall we?' Draco gently but firmly took Malcolm by the elbow and steered him towards the other end of the buffet table, shooting a wink and a grin at his date over his shoulder as he walked away, leaving her completely confused as to what had just happened and why she had been abandoned. She didn't have any more than a few heartbeats to try and make sense of it before she was joined by her other first years. "'Hermione, you look gorgeous!' Allison looked her up and down, nodding in approval of her mentor's outfit for the evening. "'No wonder Draco can't take his eyes off you!' Hermione choked on the heart-shaped biscuit she'd just picked up. Before she could insist that Allison was exaggerating, Darla added her two cents as well. "'Oh, yes,' she said dreamily. "'He follows you everywhere, and whenever he's close enough, he's either holding your hand or he has his arm around you. He's played with your curls a couple times, too. I've been watching him.' She nodded vehemently, not having the slightest clue that her insight made her sound like a stalker. The older witch chuckled slightly, knowing she couldn't deny any of it. For whatever reason, Draco had been a little more physical with her since the party started. They often held hands when they went for walks, and sometimes he would put his arm around the back of her chair when they sat next to each other. But neither of them were very comfortable with outward displays of affection, nor did they wish to become one of those couples who made everyone nauseous due to how overly affectionate they were. Tonight, however, Darla wasn't wrong. Not that Hermione was complaining. If anything, she liked it how it sent the message that she was his, how it showed that he wanted to be near her. She'd never had someone be that way with her before, and it made her feel special, which was nice. Forcing her attention back to her young friends, she got the tail end of Allison's question about why Malcolm was with Draco. All three witches turned a glance at the unlikely pair at the other end of the table for a moment, before the first years looked expectantly at Hermione for an explanation. "'I'm honestly not sure,' she began. "'I came over here to check on Malcolm, because he looked rather ill,' but he insisted he was fine. Then Draco came over, noticing the same, and all of a sudden they're walking off to get punch, and I'm left standing here. She finished in mock indignation. She truly didn't mind, as she knew Draco was trying to help the younger student. I bet I know what's going on, Allison said in a low voice. He's been mooning about all week, and we, she gestured between herself and Darla, think he fancies someone here at the party. All of a sudden, the light bulb went on in Hermione's head. She remembered Malcolm's questions about what would be taking place at the Valentine's Day party, when they had all met for dinner the last time. 
He had definitely seemed like he had had his heart set on asking someone to dance, or get a photo made, or something. Hermione immediately scanned the group on the floor, trying to figure out exactly who that could be. The girls had mentioned another first year named Emmeline, who had a crush on him, but those feelings didn't seem to be mutual. As she studied the other girls scattered throughout the room, he saw a movement out of the corner of her eye. Malcolm was walking, no, marching was more like it, towards the dance floor. His chin was up, his shoulders back, and he looked like he was about to storm the gates. Hermione cast a fleeting glance at Draco, who was still standing by the punch bowl, arms crossed in front of himself, a smug little grin on his face. He caught her gaze, his eyes dancing with mischief, and Hermione felt a pang of worry for her young charge. What has he talked him into? The determined Gryffindor didn't slow his pace until he had stopped directly in front of Daphne, who had been engaged in conversation with Dean and two younger students. Hermione watched as the striking witch's eyebrows shot up in surprise, immediately followed by a quick look at Draco, who gave the tiniest of nods. Daphne nodded then, a smile spread across her pretty face, and Malcolm stood even taller if possible. He offered his arm to her, which she took while clearly doing her absolute best not to laugh at how serious the boy was being, and they took a few steps into the center of the dance floor. Even though the song was being played was a typical muggle club-style song, Malcolm acted as if it were a waltz at the palace. True to his pure-blood upbringing, he bowed to Daphne and offered out his hand. She, in turn, gave a small curtsy and took it. They moved into a traditional dance position, with a solid nine or ten inches between them, as Malcolm started moving them slowly in a circle. The sight was too precious for Hermione, whose eyes prickled with tears. She knew Daphne was only humoring the young wizard, but the kindness her friend was bestowing was surely something he would remember fondly for years to come. Darla and Allison were beside themselves over the events unfolding in front of them, and dashed off to discuss it with some of their classmates, leaving Hermione alone in the exact same spot for the second time that night. Before she could even begin to feel sorry for herself, however, her own dance partner was at her side once more. "'Think that's just about made his year?' Draco chuckled, but quickly stopped when he noticed the sheen in her eyes. "'What's wrong?' "'Oh, nothing,' she quickly reassured him. "'I just think it's so very sweet is all.' She sniffed, dabbing her under her eyes, and gave a small huffing laugh. "'How on earth did you figure out it was Daphne he had his eyes on?' Draco jutted his chin and spoke in a superior tone. "'I have my ways, my intuition, my keen skills, all top secret, of course.' Hermione couldn't help but giggle as she swatted his arm playfully. "'Yes, yes, of course, very impressive you are.' He pinned her with a smoldering gaze that caused her stomach to flip. "'I don't think you've had the chance to experience all of my impressive skills yet,' he smirked as she blushed prettily and looked down at the floor. "'Perhaps we should schedule a demonstration, then,' she suggested coyly, peeking at him from under her lashes, and pleased to see the look of mild yet eager surprise that crossed his face before he schooled his features into a mask of cool indifference. "'I think that could be arranged.' He was doing a stellar job of playing aloof and unaffected, but she knew him better than that by now, and could tell his brain was already worrying with ideas and possible scenarios. "'Why don't you begin with your obvious talent for party menus and buffet setups?' She gestured to the incredible spread of snacks and desserts he had amassed for the event. "'Tell me how you narrowed it down to these specific offerings, many of which are my personal favorites, I'll have you know.' She watched him struggle to refocus his attentions on their present surroundings, and fought the urge to laugh when he scowled at the tray of cream puffs directly in front of him. When he raised his eyes back to hers, however, the crease in his brow was gone, and a genuine smile spread across his face. "'I picked them for you, of course.' "'Really?' "'Yes, really.' "'The sugar quills?' "'You always have one with you in class.' "'True. I guess that one's kind of obvious. And the cream puffs have Nutella, don't they?' Yes, I figured you must like it, too, since you had it at your house, though quite possibly not as much as I do, he chuckled lightly. But how did you even know I like strawberry squids, or that fudge flies are my favorite? I pay attention. His gray eyes seemed to grow darker as they bore into her own. Hermione thought back to Darla's observations earlier, and once again felt her heart skip and her stomach perform gymnastics. She wanted to come back with something quick and witty— but all she could do was blink owlishly, blush furiously, and bite her own lip while her gaze dropped down to the table where one of his hands was resting. "'Good,' she whispered. "'Good?' he questioned in a quiet voice. She nodded and reached over, intertwining her fingers with his. "'Yes. Good.' 
She lifted her eyes and smiled, having no idea how utterly overwhelming he was in that very moment. I like when you pay attention to me. She leaned in and kissed his cheek, inhaling his familiar cologne, and reveling in the fact that her boyfriend, Draco Malfoy, had made such a tremendous effort to impress her tonight. She thought it just might be the sweetest, no pun intended, thing anyone had done for her before. Draco felt like he was floating, like perhaps he was having some sort of out-of-body experience. He had watched the various emotions flit across Hermione's face during their exchange. She had been surprised by his admission that the treats really had been picked with her in mind. Then she had seemed simultaneously pleased and embarrassed. He guessed she'd never had anyone pay her that kind of attention, which she felt was stupid since she deserved all that and so much more. But the smile she'd given him made his heart swell to bursting. He really was a goner, and he knew it, completely head over heels for this witch, but honestly had no idea the effect she had on him. Merlin, if there hadn't been a room full of people around them when she mentioned a demonstration, he would have swiped away half the desserts on the table, and— "'Great job, you two! Bill greeted the young couple as he and his wife walked towards them. Both he and Fleur were glancing about, taking in the decorations, guests, and food that filled the room that evening. Hermione greeted both of them with a hug and immediately started a conversation with Fleur, while Draco wrangled his thoughts into something more appropriate as he faced his head of house. "'Thanks. Glad you and Fleur could make it,' he said sincerely. Since the school year had started, he had grown to appreciate and respect the eldest Weasley tremendously, and viewed him as a bit of a mentor. "'Wouldn't miss it. The eighth year's parties have racked up quite a reputation, you know,' he winked. "'Had to have something to tell my rabid sixth and seventh years in class this week when they badger me for details.' The two wizards chuckled as they surveyed the goings-on around them. "'Who is Daphne dancing with?' Bill suddenly asked, squinting into the throng of students. Draco gave another low chuckle, and told Bill the story of Malcolm and his single-minded goal for the evening. The older man couldn't contain a hearty laugh as he continued to watch the unusual pair. The slower song had ended, and now the first year was showing off a few of his very own dance moves while Daphne bopped along beside him, grinning in amusement. "'Oh, that is priceless,' Bill sighed. "'To be so young and unencumbered by life's bigger schemes.' He sounded wistful as he continued to watch Malcolm and the others. "'It's been a long time since I felt that carefree. Although this year is probably the most peaceful and uncomplicated I've experienced in quite a while.' He turned to study the tall blonde next to him. "'How about you?' Draco considered the question for a moment, nodding his head thoughtfully. "'Yes, I definitely agree with that.' His eyes wandered back to the beautiful brunette still engaged in animated conversation with Fleur. He smiled warmly. "'I'm happier than I have ever been.' Bill grinned knowingly and clapped a hand on Draco's shoulders. "'I'm glad, Malfoy. Truly. You deserve the same chance at happiness as everyone else. Even more so, I would say, after everything you endured the past few years.' Draco started at this, turning skeptical eyes on the redhead, and wondered how he had come to that conclusion— I know you didn't have a choice, that your path was chosen for you the same way Harry's was chosen for him. It's unfortunate that you boys landed on such opposing sides, but the trauma and turmoil you've each experienced is not diminished by the roles you were forced to play. Bill studied the young man beside him. I hope you were healing. I know what a long and arduous process that is, but I hope you're able to reconcile it all so that you can move forward and be whole. Again, gray eyes rested on the Gryffindor princess, and a feeling of immense gratitude and peace flooded through him. He nodded. I'm working on it. There's days where I still wonder when the joke will be up, and I'll be carted off to Azkaban again. But most of the time I'm just thankful to be here, alive, with her. He tilted his head in the direction of his favorite witch, not even bothering to try and hide how much she meant to him, knowing Bill was already aware. Now that is something I understand better than most— Bill replied, a smile gracing his scarred features. For what it's worth, Malfoy, I'm glad you're here, too. With that, he turned and gestured to his lovely wife, beckoning her out to the dance floor, which she enthusiastically agreed to, leaving Draco and Hermione alone once again. She turned to face him, her eyes sparkling and her hand reaching for his. We should dance, too. Check on our first years and all that. She winked as he laced his fingers through hers, and he grinned as he allowed her to drag him into the center of the crowd.